I have been every voice. You are the chosen one! Anakin! Anakin! This is where the fun begins. Inside your head. Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about The Mandalorian Season 3, a brand new video game and more. As always my dear Megalorians, before I dive into the news please may I ask you to hit that big red subscribe button if you've not done so and also be sure to give that bell a good old tickle to be alerted each and every time that I post new content. So as we say around these parts without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. So we have a couple of pieces of very interesting news for The Mandalorian. We're going to start with a video game that's reportedly in development for Mando. Rumour has it that a new Star Wars video game is in the works and it's going to be based around The Mandalorian Season 2. Ever since Din Djarin and Baby Yoda first flew onto our screens in 2019, fans have pointed out how game-like the series feels, with Pedro Pascal's Mando taking on a series of missions that are somewhat similar to the side quests of a video game. Plus, The Mandalorian TV show's visual effects are made using Unreal Engine technology, which was originally created to use in video games. There's no word yet on which company is meant to be making The Mandalorian game and there's no of a release date either, but still, the idea of suiting up in Beskar to travel the Star Wars galaxy in a major new game is very enticing. It is worth taking this rumour with a pinch of salt though because it comes from a new photo of ex-boss boss Phil Spencer. I think I said ex-boss, I mean ex-box boss. Phil Spencer. Spencer has been known to include hints for new projects on his shelf of geeky stuff, which often appears behind him during live streams and presentations. Fans thought that they saw Mandalorian Funko behind Spencer in a new image, but it was later proven to be a different Funko altogether. Despite the confusion about this action figure, one user on Twitter, the founder of XboxEra.com, remains convinced that there is a Mandalorian game on the way. Apparently, an industry source has disclosed that information to him. This is what he tweeted. Okay, so a little bit of a whoopsie. Yeah, there's going to be a Mando game, but um, that's apparently not a Mando Funko. I might have just said something I wasn't supposed to yet, hoping I didn't just burn my source. Got some apologising to do. Nobody from Disney has publicly confirmed the existence of a Mando game, but we'll find out in due course. What do you guys think? Would you like to play a Mandalorian based game? I think it'd be absolutely epic. So now for some exciting news for both The Book of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian Season 3. A while ago I discussed how great Bryce Dallas Howard was when she directed two episodes of The Mandalorian, one in Season 1 and again in Season season two and how she has a big future at Lucasfilm. Well it turns out that she's reportedly already directed an episode of The Book of Boba Fett and she's going to direct again in The Mandalorian season three. So let's take a look at this article. Director Bryce Dallas Howard's two episodes of The Mandalorian, 2019 Sanctuary and season two's The Heiress show her deeper knowledge of what makes Star Wars tick. In particular, she knows how to deftly deploy the influences that make up the saga's backbone. Star Wars began as a patchwork of classic sci-fi stories that inspired George Lucas. He originally wanted to make a Flash Gordon movie, but couldn't secure the rights, which is why it's such a big influence on the original films. Akira Kurosawa's The Hidden Fortress is another major and often cited inspiration. So why am I telling you all of this? Because Bryce Dallas Howard brought that into her Star Wars directing skills. Bryce Dallas Howard is particularly good at delivering satisfying homage. With the first episode that she directed called Sanctuary, she gave us seven samurai on a different planet. Written by Favreau, the episode has strong characterization and stakes for Din Djarin, with the peaceful town and the villager Omera symbolizing a life he could have had if he gave up bounty hunting. The chemistry between them, the scene setting and the action make it a strong showing. It's not quite original as it pulls from classic films, but the same can be said of Star Wars in general. As we know, Bryce Dallas Howard returned for season two to direct the episode called The Heiress, and it it handles Star Wars influences in a very different way. By directly connecting the look and feel of the episode to another part of the sprawling saga, Howard ushers in the first live action appearance of Bo-Katan. The reason this episode was so great, specifically in reference to Katie Sackhoff's character, is that Bryce Dallas Howard directs the action on screen in a way that nods to the animated series The Clone Wars. Mandalorian zooming through the sky with jetpacks, the exchange of blaster fire across long hallways, highly coordinated gravity-defying maneuvers, and the sinister Imperial remnant on their tail. The the episode fully embraces the fantasy of being an armoured warrior against overwhelming numbers, a setup found quite often in the animated series. Bryce Dallas Howard has had a lot of time to learn how Star Wars works. She's the daughter of Ron Howard, a longtime collaborator of George Lucas, who also directed Solo, A Star Wars Story. In the behind the scenes in Disney Gallery, The Mandalorian, she tells a story about having dinner with her father, George Lucas and Kurosawa. So honestly guys, this is an awesome addition to The Mandalorian season three and it's definitely something to get excited about. I'm even more excited to see what she can do with the book of Boba Fett, but I trust her fully. I think she's one of the best directors in the industry and she's highly underrated whether she's acting or directing. 
acting. So now, my dear Megalorians, we're going to stay on the subject of the Mandalorian and ask the question, is it the time for Mandalorians to retire the Darksaber? In Star Wars, the Darksaber has decided the rulers of Mandalore for generations, but is it time for its retirement? Mandalorians are the equivalent of Spartan warriors in the Star Wars universe. They're incredibly skilled in battle and pride themselves on their traditional ideals. Yet for all of the victories they've claimed, their ideals have also created major conflicts within their own ranks. Most often than not, these conflicts have occurred when someone has challenged their belief or wanted to rule as Mandalore to reclaim the saber. To rule the home planet of Mandalore, the dark saber's wielder must be bested in combat. The most controversial ruler, of course, was Darth Maul. For decades, Maul remained in hiding and left behind the dark saber on Dathomir, where Ezra Bridger and Sabine Wren discovered it. Due to the saber's significance, it became Sabine Wren's duty to take it to her home planet of Mandalore. But it wasn't until Star Wars Rebels Season 3, Episode 15, Legacy of Mandalore, that she became the true ruler after beating Gar Saxon. From this point on, the Dark Saber's legacy began to lose meaning as Sabine offered it to Bo Katan, who accepted the saber as the new Mandalore. Since Bo Katan never defeated Sabine in combat, the Dark Saber was technically hers. Because of this, she inadvertently stripped the saber of its significance. Bo Katan's rule lasted until Moff Gideon stole the saber somehow before the events of the Mandalorian. Din Djarin later defeated Gideon in season 2 episode 8 and tried to offer it to Bo-Katan, but rather than accept it as she did with Sabine, she refused it and chose to stick to the rules of earning the dark saber through combat. Now I know a lot of people think that this is a contradiction, and you know what, it probably is. But I think season 3 is going to show us flashbacks to the real reason why Bo-Katan decided not to take it on this occasion, and I think it's to do with how Moff Gideon got it. Bo-Katan displayed the exact reason why the dark saber should be looked at as a weapon of the leader and not the deciding factor. Going forward, it'll be really interesting to see if Mando holds onto the Darksaber and becomes the ruler of Mandalore, or if Bo-Katan and the Night Owls try to take it from him. I also want to know the backstory to how Moff Gideon got the Darksaber from Bo-Katan and the whole backstory with them. We've spoken a lot about Bo-Katan on my channel, so it is really interesting to see what does happen. But what do you guys think and what did you think of today's news update overall? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm really eager to hear what you have to say. And just a reminder, guys, I have a lot of really interesting stuff coming up. We have interviews with people who've been in Star Wars, actors and actresses, so that'll be really fun. And finally, my dear friends, one quick announcement. To celebrate Star Wars Day, brand new t-shirts are coming to my merch store. From now until the end of May, you get 20% off the entire store by using code SWM20. If you are or if you become a patron, you get a further 30% off, which means 50% off the entire store. With a whole new range of Megalorian t-shirts and many more on the way, don't miss out. All you have to do is follow the link in the description and simply use the code SWM20 at checkout. I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.